Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to Chinta. So I have with me Rushil Reddy. He is a 10th grader at Germantown Academy. Uh, it's a school in Philly. And uh, Rushil has been, has been working with Chinta on this beautiful project of uh, optimizing, optimizing machine learning models for lung tumor and cancer detection using computer vision techniques. Uh, I think Rushil is being inspired by his father because I think his father is a doctor. So I would leave this whole presentation to Rushil and uh, I will ask him st to start by introducing himself and why did he get interested in this project in the beginning? Yeah. Um, hello, my name is Rushil Reddy. Um, I'm a 10th grader at Germantown Academy um, and I was in like I wanted to do this project because I've always had like an interest in uh, like science and then um, specifically medicine, like you said, because of my father. Uh, and recently I've done like the Chenta research uh, like program thing with using machine learning and I have applied it to like a medical field problem, which is uh, lung tumor detection. Um, so this is my project. And you have submitted it to the PJAS, right? Like Pennsylvania yeah. Journal of yeah. Sciences. Yes, I have. I've competed it there. So this is my project on optimizing machine learning models for lung tumor detection. And this is the first part of my project where I only use computer vision. Um, and yeah, this is where I submitted it. I submitted it to the PJAS competition and I got second place in my district for my category. Okay, so this is the introduction to lung cancer and like the disease itself. So as you can see, lung cancer is caused like all other cancers by uncontrolled mutated cell division. And you can see what it looks like right here and just around this box. And there's two types. When you see something in there, any abnormality, it can either be cancerous, meaning it's harmful and treatment must be done to take it out or it can be benign, meaning that there is something there, there's like a mass there that's caused by these like mutated cells, but it won't harm you in any way, and you can just keep it in there um, and live the rest of your life. And lung cancer especially is very uh, widespread, and it's the leasing cause of cancer deaths um, in the US. So this is how the screening process works. Initially, you would go to your doctor every year for your checkup, and they would look at factors like your age, if you smoke, your family history, and they would see all these factors and be like, would you, are you in risk of having lung cancer or are you not in risk? If they did deem you in risk enough, then you will go to the next step, which as you can see here is medical imaging. In this step, medical imaging of either a CT or a PET scan are taken. And there are three possibilities here. First, you're clear there's nothing harmful in your lungs, there's no abnormalities, and you can exit the screening process. Secondly, there is a cancer, and now we have to determine whether the cancer is, like I said before, cancerous or benign. And now the doctor again has to decide, okay, is it worth the risk of getting a biopsy done where they open you up and actually get a sample of that cancer to check if it's cancerous or benign, or does it most likely look that it's benign? Or also there's a third case where it's like, they would have to check up on you later. And if they do think it's cancerous, then they would get you done a biopsy and they would actually confirm whether or not it's cancerous or whether it's benign. So this is the introduction to the problem and related works. So this is the problem statement. What we're trying to do is that we're trying to go from that medical imaging step, which is the second step you can see, to detecting whether it's cancerous or benign. And in between, there's a medical and computational process that can get us from point A to point B. One of these important uh, models here is the Brock model. And as you can see, it takes these nine different factors and assigns each of these factors a number and then this number and a bunch of other coefficients are put into this equation that has already been tested and already been experimented on to see which, how much of a probability is. It gives you this uh, answer called log odds, and then this is uh, plugged into a sigmoid function, which is, is a regular function that is known for detecting probability. And then you could get a probability of cancer on this. 
after this probability, many uh, clinicians would be like, if it's after this threshold probability, we will get a biopsy done, and if not, a biopsy will not be done. So this is the current process. You have the scan, then the doctors read the scan, they pick out these factors that we have seen before uh, through their like, or they might not even use the Brock model, they might just go based off of their own experience, but they will pick out these factors, maybe use the Brock model, and then find out whether or not it's cancerous or benign. And depending on its probability of cancer, they will get a biopsy done. And our work aims to speed up this part of where the doctors are actually spending their time looking at this scan and extracting these features. What we're trying to do is that we're trying to use computers, AI, and in this case, computer vision, to get from the scan to the features, which we, then we can plug into the Brock model and detect if it's cancerous or benign. So this is the data set, methodology, and results. So we got this data set from Cancer Imaging Archive, and there are about 367 um, patients who are a part of this data set. And you can see how there are CT images, which is shown on the first and third column. And there's also PET scan images, which is shown in the second and fourth column. Um, and you can kind of see the difference. CT is more white, uh, and there's more like little uh, bits in the lungs, while the PET scan is more like just black in the lungs and more grayer in the uh, surrounding tissue. The data set also contains annotation boxes, which are in a form of can I ask a question, Lucia? Yes. Can you go back to the last slide? Yes. So, uh, so if you remember, can you work to the Brox model? Yes. So there is a term called speculation, right? Oh yes. Okay, I'll describe each of these. What? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, so no, uh, yeah, please describe it once. Yes. So age, sex, and then family history are all self-explanatory. Emphysema is a specific disease in which uh, there are parts of the lung that look different on a scan. Um, and that would kind of be its own project. It's very common in smokers. So it's pretty common for people who have lung cancer. Um, and yeah, and then nodule size is the largest uh, diameter of the nodule. So you can see like how uh, just the largest size of it. Nodule type is that there's three types. There is a solid nodule, meaning it's like a certain consistency. There is the ground glass, or uh, um, which looks pretty clear in a CT scan. And then there's also the semi-solid, which is the most... Uh, that one associated with the highest risk. Additionally, there's nodule in upper lung, which is just if the nodule is in the upper lung, which is defined uh, based off of like where it is, if it's in the upper half. There's nodule count, which is how many. Um, for this data set, it's always one. And then there's speculation, which shows how irregular the growth of the nodule is. So there would be no speculation if the nodule looked more circular. But then if it was not circular, if it was more like spread out, more you can see more growth, then that means there would be speculation. Yes, thank you. So uh, what I was asking, can you go back to the CT and PET? Oh, yes. So in this, uh, I think, can you detect uh, speculations on uh, a PET because it's kind of darker? Yeah, it's harder, but as you can see here, this is speculation, and you can also, like, these are the same picture, it's just that this is the PET scan of it, and you can kind of see how there's these little abnormalities growing out of it. Got but it. obviously, as you can see here, it's much easier to de detect on a... Um, so you have used CT or PET? Uh, for this step, I've used both. It's compatible with both. Okay. It's just slightly different code for each one of them. Please go ahead. Yes. Additionally, these data set contains XML files, which it, uh, that have annotation boxes under this root called bounding box, and you can get the Xmin, Ymin, Xmax, and Ymax under there. Um, and as you can see, I'm going back to the previous slide, these are what the uh, bounding boxes look like. As you can see, there's a little box surrounding the nodule, and you can um, make out inside the cancer. Also, there's clinical data of the patients, such as their sex, their age, their weight, um, and their smoking history. And there's also some factors of uh, the, no, uh, the nodule itself. Like, for example, the T stage is how large it is. Uh, the N stage is how grown into the lung it is, if it's only in the lung, if it's gone to other places, um, et cetera.
but so we you didn't use all of this uh, information in the Brox model, right? No, because the Brox model doesn't need this information. It needs other information. Got it's it. just that information that was given to us. Got it. Thanks. Okay, so the first uh, factor from the Brox model that we're trying to extract is size. So pretty much what we do here is that we take all of the bounding boxes and all of the pictures and we find the largest length or uh, height of the bounding box and it will give us the largest size of the nodule and we just loop through this process um, and it returns the size. This is obviously an approximation. It's not perfect because sometimes the bounding box is slightly larger, but it gives a very accurate uh, approximation. The second one is extracting the nodule type. Uh, so we take the largest size, which is actually returned from the size function, uh, the image with the largest size, and then we find the mean pixel value. Uh, which you can see is kind of different for the CT and PET scan. And depending on that mean pixel value, we will classify it into these three types. So if it's, for example, in the CT, you can see if the mean pixel value is below negative 400, it's non-solid or ground glass, and then it's partially solid between this range and solid between this range. Um, and then this is the second factor that we extracted. The third factor that we extracted is the- So you mean that the, the more whiter, the more intense it is, uh, the more chance of it being solid? Yes, and then if it's like in between these two areas, it's partially solid, and then it's uh, non-solid uh, if it's way below. So how um, did you get these values, or did you fix it yourself? Uh, I fixed it myself. Uh, I was just like looked through sources online. Okay, so one, one interesting thing, can we just you can take a note down so that you can do it in part two, is yeah. um, you can like plot the histogram of it. Okay. Okay. And um, see that if there are two class three clusters naturally coming up. Okay. So yeah. Two clusters naturally yeah. coming up, we can make that. So that will be more scientific rather than you choosing from online. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Very good work. Please go ahead. Okay. The next part is extracting the location, and this one we're trying to get a true or false value. True if it is in the upper lung, and then false if it's not in the upper lung. And pretty much what we do here is that we loop through, we assign each uh, 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 for like CT scan, 2D slice of this CT scan that has an annotation box, meaning it has the tumor in it. Uh, a number, and then we check if those numbers are in the first half, in the first top, or if they're not. And if the entire thing's not in the first half, then it's not considered to be in the upper lung. Lastly, we just used the clinical data that was given that I mentioned previously to extract uh, sex and age using open PYXL, uh, just to read the Excel file and extract this information. Here you can see some example outputs. You can see the age, sex, nodule size, nodule type, and nodule in upper lung. And then we calculated the probability of cancer. Obviously, this assumes that there was no speculation, no family history, and no uh, emphysema. But these are things we plan to implement later. And then this is future work. So the first thing we want to do is that we're going to train a model to... Uh, segment the uh, tumor or like the nodule more specifically um, and some and we'll use segment anything foundation model to uh, have as a baseline for it then we will adapt the previous feature extractors to these new segmentations that we've made with our own model um, we will try to de detect emphysema and speculation two things that we couldn't previously obviously we can't detect family history that's just a fact um, that we can't see in the CT scan. Um, and then we'll arrange for better evaluation techniques and compare multiple models to find which one is the best one to get the most accurate information to get the most helpful information. Yeah, I um, think uh, if you have segmentation, Rusha, uh, you will get better um, nodule size, more approximate. Nodule. Yes, yes. Did you really think of any approach like using the age direction approach or something like that? Using, sorry, what? age direction approach or something like that? Did you think of any approach? Uh, so we're going to use Monai, uh, that, uh, which is like a pre-existing way, like uh, like some starter code that I'll edit into my own way to try and create 
uh, segmentations um, of the pictures. So now uh, my question is that given a segmentation of mask of the nodule, how are you planning to get the size of the nodule? So currently I was trying to find like the edge pixels and then we would find the longest distance between them. Or another idea that was suggested to me was that uh, we try and fit the irregular shape into a curve and then we just use uh, we co like find the largest distance in that like a regular curve. Okay, that sounds good. Um, yeah, okay. Okay, that's good. That's great. Uh, so, which is the link for the Brox model? This one at the end. Okay. Okay. So, the thing I really like about your approach, Ushil, is uh, can you go back to that middle slide that where doctors are looking into the images and that main slide yeah. of your contribution? Yeah. Yeah. So in this, uh, what I really like is that you know, usually in this case, in this today's world, everyone is using random AI, fitting the data and seeing what's coming up. But that lacks interpretation. That lacks, uh, you know, doctors. Uh, why will the doctors believe in that? So what I really like about your approach is, uh, as far as I remember, that you really did a really good work in understanding the what is a disease, and it's very visible from the where you have presented, you've talked to your father and you have made notes of what it means. And then you only came up with this Brock model that has been used, right? Yes. Uh, so this is a really good approach. It makes uh, medical AI more interpretable, more from, it's it's very interesting. So thank you for doing this. It's it's a really good approach to take, um, uh, to make it more interpretable for the doctors, for the medical community, yes. for the people. So that's great. That's great. Super. Uh, anything more you have to add or say? Um. No, I think that's it. I just did it this way because then it becomes more helpful, more applicable to the real world. Just going straight from like the scan to cancers or benign, the doctors can't really see the features that were extracted. And this makes it, I feel more trustworthy as I've spoken to my dad about, he's always hesitant about AI stuff. Um, and also something that if they are worried about, they can recheck and uh, just makes more sense logically in the uh, screening process, I would say. Perfect. Thank you so much, Rishil. I'm looking forward to the second part. Um, I think in the second part, you already tried to implement segment anything, which is like the really the top notch model right now for segmentation and you're trying to implement yeah. it. So really looking forward to the results. I think, yes, as you have said, you need some more work into understanding and evaluating different AI models and see that why yours, yours is working better. So really good work, Rushil. Very, very happy and very happy you got the second position in the yes, EJS. Um, all the best for the upcoming uh, journey of your uh, research. Bye-bye, okay. uh, Rushil. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir.